Race 10 is a Pontefract Marathon, two miles, five and a half furlongs, for goodness sake. Nought to 90, five of them. Captain Morgan, Matt Cooper, Maundy Thursday, Nick Driver, Crop Duster, Paul Parsons, Prize Princess, Nick Driver and Mumbles Peer, Alex Cherry. I'll say it again, as I say it every week. Nobody in the world wants to see flat races over two miles, five and a half furlongs. They are for horses that are too slow to pull a milk cart. They're not interesting. They're a way of racing. Crop duster on the outside is just about the leader, but now Captain Morgan is going to come through. And comes Prize Princess on Monday, Thursday. Mumbles Pier is at the back. There's a reason why in real racing they make these races the last race of the day, because most people go home before they start. Captain Morgan's in the lead. That's what they ever have them, of course. You very often see it there. I don't, must admit, I don't follow the racing every day like I used to back in the 80s and stuff, but is there anybody in the world as an expert on two mile, five furlong handicaps on the flat? They're just bad horses, surely. Um, encouraging people to put these sort of horses in the league is just the races, isn't it? We don't need them. Cut the the schedule down by three races a week if we chucked out all these long distance ones. Anyway, Captain Morgan's in the lead, and Crop Duster in second, Prize Princess is third, Monday Thursday is fourth, and Mumbles Pier is back in fifth. Captain Morgan out in front. I'd rather see a 0 to 65 furlong race. And encourage people to put sprinters in that are no good rather than these because they just go on forever. I sit here now for the next five minutes trying to think of something to say without upsetting anybody. And I have to do the amount of commentating I have to do. I really don't want to be doing these. So nobody else wants to commentate on a flat, I think. Anyway, Captain Morgan. If this is a jump race, they might fall over or something. But anyway, Captain Morgan's in front. I'm sure Matt Cooper won't care if he wins. Nick Driver won't care if he wins. Paul Parsons won't care if he wins. And Alex Cherry's been around long enough to not take any notice of me anyway. So, <laughs> Captain Morgan in the lead. I don't mean anything bad. I just, you know, when you have to contact on 40, 50 races a week like I do, I don't want to be doing these. And Captain Morgan is in the lead. Crop Duster in second. Prize Princess is second. Maundy Thursday is well back in fourth. We could agree, I suppose, to put them in and just not have them commentated on. I did think about missing this one out, but then I thought it might not necessarily be fair on the trainer who gets the winner. But maybe they don't mind if they get commentated on or not. I don't know. It's Captain Morgan in the lead. Crop Duster second. Prize Princess is third. This is normally where, in this race, where I tell everybody about the history of Pontefract Racecourse. And you go back through the years, I probably have to do the same thing every year, because this race is on every year. And every year there's about two, three, four, or five runners in it. And I need to find something to say. So I tell everybody about how the first race at Pontefract always used to be 2.45. As old as me, you can remember that. I used to manage a chain of betting shops. And... And Pontefract was on, it was great because you could stay in a pub till quarter three. You didn't have to go back to the office. Because there wasn't going to be a race because the coal mine was in the middle. Or well, next door. And the shift finished at two o'clock, I think, or two thirty. And that gave the miners time to get washed. Showered, get all the coal dust off them. And um, then spend the afternoon in the races after they'd been to work. Of course, that doesn't happen anymore because they shut the coal mines down, didn't they? So, yeah, Pontefract starts same time as anywhere else. Anyway, I tell that story every year. Nobody ever comments on it. Nobody even checks whether it's true or not. It is true, I oh, know. But anyway, Crop Dust has gone through to take it up. From Captain Morgan in second. And Monday, Thursday is well back in third. Prize Princess is even further back in fourth. And Mumbles Pier. Looks like he might make a four mile chaser next season. 
back in fifth. Uh, could this be another winner for Paul Parsons? Has he had two winners on the same day yet? Nick, Nick Driver might have something to say about it. Here comes Maundy Thursday. It's not Thursday, it's Sunday. No, it's not, it's still Saturday. Blimey. Anyway, Crop Duster now being challenged by Maundy Thursday. Crop Duster's hanging on. Maundy Thursday's trying to get closer, but hasn't got the speed, and Crop Duster takes it. If that is Paul Parsons' first double, then I apologise for ruining it by doing a rubbish com, but maybe it's slightly better than no com. And uh, well done. Crop Duster takes it. Probably ran slightly slower than a Crop Duster. Maundy Thursday was so slow it didn't finish till Shrove Tuesday. Captain Morgan was back in third and probably drunk a bottle of it. What's going that well? Prize Princess for Nick Driver was next. Can't think of anything clever to say. Um, Mumbles Pier was last for Alex Cherry. See that in next year's Grand National. Thank you very much.